and welcome to the part 9 of my 2024 F1 season simulation. If you missed part 8, make sure to check that one before watching this video. So, here we are for the round 9 of the 2024 season. 2024 Canadian Grand Prix. And yeah, this should, one should be exciting as before uh, the week before we had some uh, weather forecast for this Grand Prix. And as we come closer to the Grand Prix itself, yeah, the, the weather looks very interesting. It looks like it's going to be raining every single session. At least every single session is going to be rain affected. Uh, just how much it's going to be, uh, we'll see basically. But yeah. Um, okay. Um, in terms of upgrades, let's see. So uh, the, up uh, the teams bringing big upgrades for this weekend are uh, Palpine and Hass. So. Uh, the teams with some small upgrades are Ferrari, McLaren, Racing Bulls, Williams, and Sauber. It's like Alpine and has been also some small upgrades, which are all part of the bigger upgrade package as well. So yeah, let's see if those upgrades worked in any, any way. Uh, what will the rain-affected Q1 will bring us this time? As we see PS3 topping Q1 provisionally, Head of Charles Leclerc, George Russell in P3, Carl Sainz P4, Lionel Norris P5, Alonso P6, Hamilton P7, Stroll P8, Ocon P9, and Max Verstappen only in P10. Yuki Tsunoda P11, Holker P12, Ricardo P13, Pierre Gasly in P14, and Guan Yu Zhou in P15. Provisionally out in Q1 are Alex Albon, Sergio Perez, Kevin Magnussen, Valtteri Bottas, and Logan Sargent. Uh, the big shock here is obviously Perez provisionally out in Q1, and unless two drivers get uh, like lead lap times or whatever, he may just well be out in Q1 this time. Uh, keep in mind this is a rain affected session, the, the lap times aren't like uh, car based most of the time. I, I mean, they are just. Uh, Wet sessions, you know how they how they go. Just uh, some parts of the sessions are faster than the others, so we can we can have max or seven P10, which wouldn't happen under normal circumstances, obviously, in qualifying, especially a wet one. Um, let's see, with any changes? There are no changes, uh, no driver changes, no delay lap times whatsoever. Things stand as they are, so. Out in Q1 are Alex Albon, Sergio Perez, Kevin Magnussen, Valtteri Bottas, and Logan Sargent. Let's see what will Q2 bring us as it's... Uh, yeah, the rating stepped up quite a bit in this session as we have Charlotte look like topping the session with Lando Norris in P2 and Max Verstappen in P3. Esteban Ocon in P4, Hamilton P5, Piastri P6, Pierre Gasly in P7, both Alpines in the top 7. Which is very, very weird. We have the Aston Martin last stroll in P8. Hulkenberg in P9 has managed to get into the Q3 provisionally. And uh, Fernando Alonso just making it in P10 provisionally. Out in Q2 are George Russell, the the one big shock, with Scrabble Science, another big shock as well, uh, in P12. Gwen Zhou in P13, and the racing little cars of Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda. Yuki Tsunoda unfortunately had an off, crashed, and only could have that quick of a lap time. Uh, brought out a red flag and unfortunately couldn't get into another session without damaging his car. And yeah, basically, taking a red flag. Whenever a driver brings out a red flag in qualifying, they're pretty much, uh, pretty much out, uh, even if they get through anyway. But this time, so it doesn't get through because his lap time was way, way slower than the rest because, uh, well, the times got better as, as time went on, basically. Okay, so final qualifying to classification. Uh, no no delayed lap times, no changes whatsoever. Charles Leclerc tops Q2 and Alain Oler is Max Verstappen. Ocon, Hamilton, PS3, Gasly, Stroll, Hockenberg and Alonso get through with George Russell, Carlos Sainz, Gwen Jo, Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda out in Q2. For Q3, we have Lando Norris on provisional pole position for the Canadian Grand Prix, with Fernando Alonso just 31 tenths of uh, 31 thousandths of a second behind in P2. We have Oscar Piastri P3, Max Verstappen P4, Lewis Hamilton P5, Lance Stroll P6, 
Charles Leclerc P7, and then the Alpines of Gasly and Ocon P8 and P9, and Nico Hulkenberg in P10. Uh, very, very interesting to see McLaren back to back on provisional pole. Well, we obviously, we don't know if Norris gets left and deleted, so uh, we'll we will see that later if that happens. Uh, maybe we can get two McLaren poles back to back. Who knows? Uh, Stroll in P6. I want to point out that so. Uh, even though the gap to Alonso is quite big, uh, finally some good qualifying position from Stroll. Leclerc quite way down in the Ferrari. Uh, Hamilton and Verstappen, the, the wet weather gods, only in P4 and P5 this time. They couldn't really match uh, quicker lap times. Seemingly uh, the McLarens were just too quick, as well as the Aston Martins, which is Stroll being slow, way slower than Alonso. The Alpines. Uh, lost some pace from Q2 and seems like they profited from the track evolution in Q2 mostly as they're only P8 and P9 but still a great result for the Alpine team as they, they are trying to well beat Williams and catch up to racing bulls in the constructor standings. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg in P10 I couldn't really get any higher in the Haas obviously as it's the well uh, I can give you a bit of a bit of a spoiler or leak or whatever uh, as things stand, Haas is the second slowest car on the grid, with Sauber like half a tenth slower. Basically, those cars are dead last in terms of pecking order, and it's quite a miracle to see one of, one of those cars in the top ten in, in a few sessions once in a while. So here we have Hulkenberg in, uh, in Q3, in P10 doing the Falkenberg heroics once again in qualifying. So let's see if there are any changes. There are no changes and so this is the final Q3 classification. Lando Norris in pole position uh, with Hamilton, uh, Alonso in P2, Piastri P3, and Max Verstappen, Hamilton, Stroll, Leclerc, Gasly, Alonso and Hulkenberg as uh, explained everything earlier. So Lando Norris second pole position in his Formula 1 career I'm, I believe which also means that it's, he's going to get ever closer to his first victory in Formula 1 while his teammate already, already has to, it must feel very, very... Uh, well, well, not demotivating, probably motivates Lanaris even more to get the first victory. And hopefully it can happen as pole position is probably the best place to start in order to win a race. So let's see. Starting grid for Canadian Grand Prix, which is... Uh, I forgot to mention that we will have quite wet race as well. Like Q3 was wet, but this this race will be like uh, from inters to wets to it's almost drives to inters to wets and so on. So just completely chaos in terms of uh, tires and whatever. Uh, Lionel Norris lines up in pole position with Fernando Alonso next to in next to him in P2. That's the rest of the grid is Costa Piastri in P3, Max Verstappen in P4, Lewis Hamilton P5, Lance Stroll P6, Charles Leclerc P7, Pierre Gasly P8, Esteban Ocon P9, and Nico Hulkenberg in P10. George Russell only P11 with Carlos Sainz in P12, Quentin Joe P13, Daniel Ricciardo P14, and Yuki Sinoda starting in P15. Then at the bottom five is Alex Albon P16, Checo Perez only in P17, Kevin Magnussen P18, Quentin, uh, sorry, uh, Valtteri Bottas in P19 and uh, Logan Sargent in P20, starting last uh, once again for Sargent. So yeah, let, let's see what will the wet, wet uh, Canadian Grand Prix bring us today. As we see Fernando Alonso winning his 34th uh, race in Formula 1. Uh, the second of the season, obviously, second for Aston Martin in their existence, basically. As we have Max Verstappen in P2, uh, I have no idea what it says uh, that he dropped two positions. Um, wait, what? Okay, that was probably uh, a mistake from on my part. I'm sorry for that. I'm pretty sure Max should be starting P4 or P5. Basically, may have to the podium. And last stroll in P3, his first podium since whoever knows how long. Uh, I'm pretty sure he got no podiums last year. As, as far as I remember, so this one may be his first podium since like uh, 2020 maybe even as yeah, 2021 only only Seb got podium, so 
yeah, stroll on the podium after after a few seasons, basically, uh, starting the podium with his teammate. Finally, some good performance from Lance Stroll. Pierre Gasly in P4 in the Alpine, making up four places. Very good for the constructors for Alpine and for the drivers for Gasly. Hamilton only in P5, but beating his teammate quite convincingly this time in the wet race, as probably Hamilton had the the edge in the wet conditions overall. Lando Norris in P6, only P6 from pole position. Unfortunately, uh, I'll explain later why a lot of drivers are down the grid. Uh, Oscar Piastri, P7, uh, same as Norris, uh, dropped quite a few places, and unfortunately only P7. P8 for Russell, uh, O'Reilly recovery, not in, nothing too great, but finished ahead of the Ferraris, which is very important for the Constructors' Championship. P9 for Carlos Sainz, head of Charles Leclerc in P10. That's the top 10, with Tsunoda in P11 just outside the points, with Brett Carter just behind in P12. Alcon in P13, Alcon in P14, Perez in P15. Uh, yeah, Perez P15, that's not good. P16 for Guan Yu Zhou, P17 for Alex Albon, P18 for Kevin Magnussen, P19 for Logan Sargent and Lachary Bottas. We did the NF, which was caused by a crash uh, from a driver error. Unfortunately, it, uh, Lachary couldn't quite manage his car in the wet conditions this time and brought out a safety car, which shuffled the order quite a bit, as we can see the McLarens especially. Uh, being hurt by the safety car, uh, as well as Charles Leclerc, for example, uh, and Ocon and Hulkenberg uh, as well. Even though Hulkenberg probably didn't have the pace overall to stay in the top ten anyway. So, yeah. All right. We are the race results uh, for the Canadian Grand Prix. So, let's see how it affected the World Drivers Championship. So. Leading the way is still Max Verstappen on 144 points, with two podiums, uh, sorry, two wins, five podiums, three pole positions, and four fastest laps. Uh, as we see, Fernando Alonso in P2 jumping George Russell once again, now on two victories, four podiums, two pole positions, and a fastest lap. George Russell only P3 after that underwhelming Canadian Grand Prix, 115 points, one victory, four, five podiums, still tied for most podiums with Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, and P4 with 100 points, a victory, two podiums, and three fastest laps. Uh, Oscar Piastri in P5, uh, one point behind Charles Leclerc with 99 points, two victories, three podiums, two pole positions, and a fastest lap. Lana Norris in P6 with 80 points, two podiums, and a pole position from this Grand Prix itself. Uh, P7 only is Lewis Hamilton, but at least he caught up and points to his teammate uh, in, a, in a way. Uh, 77 points and a podium for Lewis. P8 for Carlos Sainz so far, and 64 points, a podium, sorry, uh, a victory, two podiums, and a pole position. Uh, Checo Perez only 50 points, only P9. Now 94 points behind Max after round 9. This is getting very, very scary and very, very bad for Checo Perez as he only has one podium from this season in the Red Bull, which is uh, should be leading the constructors as well, as far as I'm aware. Uh, B10 for Yuki Tsunoda, 42 points. Uh, yeah, the Racing Bulls car seems to have dropped up in the performance in the picking order. Uh, quite a bit in a few last few races, not quite managing to be uh, scoring too many points. Uh, last stroll though, 23 points in the podium, finally getting some points for the Aston Martin team, as they really, really deserve it uh, after being, building this car, which is better than last year's one uh, compared to the fastest car on the grid, which is the Red Bull. Uh, B12 for Pierre Gasly, 19 points, very, very good result from him. Uh, Make have three places in the Drivers' Championship. P13 for Albon. Yeah, I'll... nothing really much you can do in the Williams as of this moment. Uh, it's very difficult to score points uh, with so many quick cars around. Uh, but still, 18 points on the podium. Very good for Albon. Still, P14 for Ocon at 11 points, uh, dropping two places. Ricardo at 10, po 10 points, and P15 dropping two places as well. And then the, the bottom five hasn't changed at all. Patrick Bottas in P16 at 4 points, 2 points for Logan Sargent in P17, 
two points for a Holy uh, in P18 as well, and Joe and Magnuson yet to score points in P19 and P20. So let's see how uh, this Grand Prix affected the Constructor Championship as well. As I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, Red Bull is winning the not no, winning, uh, leading the championship at 194 points, two victories, six podiums, three pole positions, and four fastest laps. Uh, two points ahead of Mercedes, uh, with who is uh, who? What? What? Should probably say who, uh, which has 192 points, uh, one victory, six podiums. So uh, the two teams, uh, top of constructors, with. The most podiums, uh, logically speaking. Uh, P3 for McLaren, 179 points, a bit of a weaker weekend considering the the qualifying, which seemed very good for McLaren. Unfortunately, the, the Grand Prix didn't pan out just as great as in uh, Monaco, for example. P4 is Ferrari on 164 points, two victories, four podiums, pole position, and three fastest laps. Uh, Aston Martin on 153 points, uh, quite a bit closer to the to the fight ahead of them now. Uh, two victories, five podiums, two pole positions, and a fastest lap for them. Racing Bulls team on 52 points, and uh, yeah, Alpine in P7 uh, with 30 points caught up quite a bit to the Racing Bulls team. Uh, thanks to Pierre Gasly's amazing result. Jumped Williams uh, by 10 points now uh, on one position. Uh, why doesn't it say they jumped them? I have no idea. Uh, Williams now in P8 dropped one place to with to P8 with 20 points and a podium. Sauber stays P9 as no point score are for Haas either. So uh, 10, 10 place for Haas and with two points. Yeah, this is the constructors after Canada. Uh, next up, we have the Spanish Grand Prix. It's round ten of the season, and uh, yeah, this, as far as I'm aware, this one should be narrated by Le Banana, So, fully excited for that. And yeah, um, I have no no spoilers for this one as I haven't simulated it yet. So, I cannot really tell you what's gonna happen, if it's gonna be exciting, but hopefully it is. Uh, there's obviously the the weather factor in Spain, it's it's pretty likely that we could have some kind of uh, weather uh, affected Grand Prix in, in some way. Um, yeah, looking forward to that Grand Prix. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, uh, comment, like, and whatever. Uh, support me if you if you obviously like the video and like my content and want me to make more videos um yeah so until next time see ya